Hey guys, we are about to color a big, beautiful brain and show all the parts of the cortex. If you want a big brain like I have, just check out underneath the video, the description, and I will tell you how to get a giant brain. If you just want to do it on a normal sized piece of paper, you can also find that in the video description. Okay. The first thing to do is to pick out four colors that you want to use to color code the four lobes of the brain. They do not have to be the same colors that I'm using in my demonstration. So pick out any four colors you like. I definitely recommend picking four colors that are very distinct from one another um, so that you can easily see the differences between the lobes. So I'm going to use red, yellow, blue, and green. I'm gonna start with the occipital lobe and call this line the beginning of it, and then just sort of go up and carry it across like so. Then I'm gonna color in the occipital lobe. Now that I have color coded that, I'm going to label it, and I'm gonna label it right on the outside edge that I left. So the occipital lobe is one of the four major lobes of the brain. It's in the back of the head, and my students, you guys are going to be responsible for researching and finding out what the occipital lobe does. Now let's go ahead and do the temporal lobe. I'm going to use green for the temporal lobe, and this is a very nice boundary for it. So we'll start along there, and then I'm going to show it kind of just angling and coming back. The temporal lobe is the part that runs uh, right along where your ear is. So now shade in all of the temporal lobe. So I have now labeled on the outside of this part the temporal lobe, which is green, and we're gonna move to the parietal lobe, which I'm gonna do in yellow. So I'm gonna call this the boundary between the frontal and the parietal lobe and go ahead and color in the parietal region. Let's go ahead and label the lobe that we just colored in. So this is the parietal lobe. And finally, we're gonna move on to the frontal lobe. I'm going to color code the frontal lobe in red. It's all of the cortex that remains. Well, shoot, my fun little time lapse didn't work on the frontal lobe. We're gonna go ahead and label the frontal lobe as such. Now let's talk about what we're looking at. So what we're looking at right now is the cortex. You'll notice I have not colored any of this. I'm focusing on the cortex for today's video. And the cortex is just the four lobes. It's what you can see on the outside. So let's make a note that the cortex equals the four lobes and it's the exterior portion of the brain. It is sometimes referred to as the neocortex. So let's add that. And it's also called the primate brain. This is the newest part of the brain in terms of evolutionary development. And it's called the primate brain because it's most prominent in primates like us. This is the part of the brain um, that really helps make us human. The other cool thing about the word cortex is that it means bark of the tree. The cortex is the outermost layer of anything. We can relate it to something like kidney anatomy too because kidneys have a cortex, an outermost layer. So that'll help you remember what cortex means. So now we're gonna look at some special structures within the cortex. Okay, let's talk about the sulci. The sulci are the grooves in the brain which have been drawn as dark lines. The Singular for sulci is a sulcus. So I'm going to draw an arrow, point that out, and label it as sulcus. 
So sulci are grooves in the brain. A sulcus is a groove in the brain. It helps give the brain these folds, which give it lots of surface area. And the more intelligent an animal is, the more of these it tends to have. If you dissect a sheep's brain, there aren't very many sulci because a sheep is not a super intelligent creature. In between each sulcus, you'll see a gyrus. And the gyrus is the bump. The plural for gyrus is gyri. Now here is a cool fact about that. If you were to unfold a typical human brain and you laid it all out, it would be about the size of two pages of newspaper. And so it's all folded in here so that it can fit into our skull. But if you laid it out, it's actually much bigger than we think. Okay, now we're gonna move to some substructures within the cortex. We're gonna talk first about the most posterior portion of the frontal lobe. And this is called the motor cortex. And I'm just going to extend my lines here and label this as the motor cortex. Again, I'm not gonna talk about what most of these structures do. Right now, we're just going to label them label them, and then my students, you will do research to learn about what all the parts do. Make sure all of your labeling is very visible. So you want to use something like a Sharpie. Pencil will not really tend to show up. In order to further differentiate the motor cortex from the rest of the frontal lobe, I'm going to shade this area in even darker. We have one more very important region that's in the frontal lobe that we're going to focus on, and that is Broca's area. And Broca's area is anterior to the motor cortex. and a fairly inferior portion of the frontal lobe overall. So make sure to label this Broca's area, and then again, shade it in nice and dark. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is draw the boundaries of the sensory cortex. And the sensory cortex is posterior to the motor cortex, and it's in the parietal lobe. Just like I did for the motor cortex, I'm going to darken the sensory cortex portion of the parietal lobe. The final two sections that we're going to label today are in the temporal lobe. This part is called the auditory cortex. You can see it is uh, pretty superior on the temporal lobe and it's posterior to the sensory cortex. If you have attached pages together like I have, this is a little tricky to write over overneath this area. Overneath? That's not a word. Over top of this area. But when I'm totally done, I'm going to get the whole thing laminated. I'll tape that down and get it all laminated. So that's our auditory cortex, and then right next to it, just posterior to it, is Wernicke's area, which is probably my favorite part of the brain to say, Wernicke. I just love his name. Make sure you spell Wernicke's area correctly. 
and that you learn how to say Wernicke and Wernicke's area. And then just like I did with the other sections, I'm going to darken these two areas. So that is our beautiful big brain. Obviously there are many areas that are not labeled, but these are parts that my students, I want you to know about. Your next task will be to determine some of the things that the cortex does and to map them on your cortex. So you have this all labeled and now you're ready to do some research and map the brain. If you are interested in more videos related to the brain and nervous system, please check the description of this video down below and you can see some links to some other ones.